Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for chat and analysis of the Premier League, the Champions League and the Europa League as well. I'm Robbie Musto, with me as ever, Robbie Earl. And here are Rob today's topics. Romelu Lukaku's dream Chelsea start against an underwhelming Arsenal at the Emirates. Nuno returns to Wolves. Kane returns to the squad and Spurs return to winning ways. Speaking of Kane, no striker issues for Manchester City in their easy victory over Norwich. Man United stumbling at St Mary's and Liverpool with another clean sheet and three points over Burnley. That's what mm. we've got coming up in today's episode. All right, my friend. Mm. Uh, you had a little, nice little weekend off. I'm sure yeah, you're lovely, all chomping you. at the bit. Lovely, you're all fired thank up you. because you haven't been lovely, on air. You managed to watch all the big games, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Let's start with the biggest game of the weekend, Rob. Arsenal yeah. nil, Chelsea yeah. 2, Lukaku and Reese James with the goals. Again, it's not long since the game's finished. Uh, wow. I mean, Arsenal up against it. We knew that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Chelsea yeah. started with Romelu Lukaku. But I'll stop there, yeah. mate. You give me... Mm your kind of main thoughts from wherever you want to start? Two huge capital football clubs on different planets, Robbie Mustard. Yeah, yeah. Going, going for different things in different ways and number of points to hit. I mm. think the most striking point I can say that, that, that illustrates where we can start the conversation is that Arsenal Football Club, the great Arsenal Football Club, started with in their striker position, Gabriel Martinelli. <laughs> the great Chelsea Football Club that has been successful, whether we like it or not, changes managers, rotates players, but delivers trophies, starts with the great Romelu Lukaku. Right there, Rob, is, is the difference of where the two teams are and where maybe we, we have to be reluctant to admit that Arsenal and not in any kind of challenge, will be challenged to make top six. And I read something interesting uh, today that that some fan was saying, you know what, with Arteta, we just got to give him his time and see how we go. And it might be the next manager who gets the benefit of Arteta's work and signings, that they can't buy a plug-in and play Lukaku because they're not in Europe, because they haven't got the money and they don't get the backing. So they've got to go a different route. So maybe the route that they're going is in a couple of years, and if Arteta does or doesn't see that out, we might start to see a competitive Arsenal. But right now, they're being left behind. The only thing I'd say, Rob, about your first comment there, and I get that, and all clubs have injuries, they Mm. do have two of their star strikers, experienced strikers, Rob, and Aubameyang and Lacazette out right now. And, And Arteta said afterwards in an interview, I think to the radio, that they've got nine players out. I'm still. I am struggling a little bit to count count nine. Yeah, who but I think it, yeah. It, it, you know, yeah. for me, it is. You know, we we should mention that probably like any other, no other club, they've got a lot of issues with COVID. People, are, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and injuries probably more than others. I mean, if they've all got mm. it, put a stick for Chelsea. And a bunch yeah, of yeah, yeah. Um, but I think they're a little bit worse off. But I think your point is well taken, Rob. They are. This is the this is the new reality for Arsenal. Mm. To be fair, mm. finally. Um, the club are really backing the manager with some new signings and some new funds and some new money. They've spent the most yeah. of any Premier League yeah. side in the window. And they've gone down a road that me and Tim kind of argued a little bit today about it. And I'm like, there's so many new players needed, Rob. Isn't that the way to go with under 23s that there's five new players that are all 23 years of age and younger, Rob. And mm-hmm. like you said, it's going to take a few years for these guys to develop. But I at least... Given the new reality, this isn't mm. Arsenal now that can go and buy Jack Grealish or or, every, or no, anybody no, else that comes no. up. It's different. And mm. that's a conversation for another day with ownership and everything, you know, stadiums yeah. and everything else. Um, but I, I think the Arsenal fans, the couple that I've spoke to are like, you know what, this is what it is right now. Yeah. They're buying some young talent and some of it might not work out, but some of it might. And Chelsea, you're absolutely right. But in two years, Rob, they've gone from, you know, a young squad with Frank Lampard the expectations were really low to like, wow, like they, they, they got a great chance of winning the title. And the young players have benefited, the Reese Jameses and the Mason Mounts and other players that have played have benefited from those years. And that Arsenal fans will hope will happen to them. I guess not in such a quick, dramatic fashion from from not really close to being uh, title um, contenders. And they did get in the top four of those young players. So I get how difficult it is. Um <clears throat> The thing that I thought, Rob, and I'm going to move it forward right now, is what, what surprised me today. And I think we said in our last podcast that my concern would be 
Arteta's kind of man management, you know, because the rest of it, mm. you know, he's a smart coach and he's, you know, he's a thinker and he's been at Man City with Pep. Were you surprised how tactically yeah. destroyed they were today from a mm. Chelsea side? There's no surprises. Mm. And I think that our boys in commentary and myself in the studio, I'm like, what is going on? Like, this isn't normal that Reese James has half the field to create and score a goal. That surprised me, Rob. What about you in terms of the game plan and the tactical side of it? It's a good point. I'm glad we've got there. So, and, and I agree. Listen, it, I, I was just making the point when you look at two teams yesterday. Yeah. Of course, Lacazette. Of course, Aubameyang. Of course, Thomas Partey. We, we've not yeah. seen enough of make a big difference when they're in that time. Yeah. And I get that. And that's why he's got to be given time. And the Odegaards and all those people and Sackers and yeah. Smith Rose are for the yeah. time. But you're right. Let, let's let's get to the tactic. The, there's some things in which there's an argument for Arteta. There's some things, Rob, and I, I went today and I said, Mikel Arteta today reminded me a little bit of Frank Lampard at the start of last season. In-game tactics, not good enough. Yeah. In-game tactics when... Now, I was, I, and, I, and I, we try and be objective with our criticism. Does the speed... I, I was trying to put myself in this position and thinking, why is he not seeing this or why is he not doing it? Do you get so caught up in the game, Rob, when you're standing down there that you don't see things? Is the game so quick that it's happening? Does he need somebody sitting upstairs who's going, we're getting hurt down the left, boss, we need to do some... I just, I don't know, but mm. it, it surprised me. It's in-game tactical now. Didn't recognise mm. that they had to adjust and deal with Reese yeah. James down that side with Sack yeah. and Chinny. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go down that road for Arteta. I think somebody else bought a comment. And, and another thought that came to my mind is, and of course, Arteta has to be that guy. I've got to tell you, Rob, if I'm Kieran Turney and I'm left back and I'm getting done like that, by the way, Saka, you're a young lad, you don't know what you're doing. Come yeah. here, sit next to me because I'm getting done here. You take him, I'll take him. Players can do that as well, Rob. And I don't know yeah. if there's enough Arsenal players who go, hold on, we're getting done. Even if the manager doesn't tell me, even at half time that I go and the manager goes, what are you bringing Saka back so much for? I say, listen, Gaffer, I'm getting done 2 B one I'm down this side. I yeah. don't see that happening at Arsenal because I don't think they've got the players who do that. I think Arsenal players are at full stretch to just deal with their own game in their own little space and, and aren't in that way. And I'm not talking about leaders and all that, which people keep on, you know, saying, well, sometimes that's just football now, Rob. I'm not going to get exposed like that. But Kaya Saku can play on the left side. Come over to the left, mate, and help me out. The biggest rollicking I ever got. I was a young pro. I just made the Oxford United first team. And the first team had a, a player called Bobby McDonald. Remember yeah, him? Remember he was, him. He was, left back, tough time, little, was aggressive left back. Yeah. Tough, aggressive. Mm. He was playing left back. I was playing left side of midfield. And he was getting a bit of a tough time in this game at home again with our fans at the, the Manor Ground. And he turned around and he gave me the biggest hammering because we're on the outside, right in front of the yeah. fans. You get back here and out me out. What do you think <laughs> you're doing? And look, look. And I'm and and from that day, God, that was almost like the biggest lesson I had. Mm. And I, and I and forever after that, I considered other players and I thought about yeah, other players yeah. immediately. Yeah. And I, of course, that didn't happen today. Um, it's just like the disconnect between Saka and yeah. Kieran Tierney was such a big gap. I'm like, of course, in the studio, Rob, we have the benefit of these big old screens with this tactical mm. um, look. <clears throat> yeah, you can see it, and we're like, we're like saying the gap is huge. And look at the space. I think to be fair, right, there was one of the goals where Kieran Tierney was came inside and forward and got caught out. Yeah, so that would have been that would have yeah, been uh, Reece James's yeah. goal. Yeah, when he the scored, first, not yeah, when he crossed when he scored, for the yeah. second goal. Yeah, he um, gets I thought that in. was a, an individual decision, but the how mm. back to the coaching the side of it, how much space there was between the lines. The first thing we've both done our coaching badges, right? On the mm. UEFA level. Mm. And the first thing they say uh, in general is when your team hasn't got the ball, yeah. you 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 in come depth, tight, you lines, become yeah. compact. When mm. you have the ball, yeah, then you spread, spread out. out to create the space. Mm. Um, and that was something that just shocked me. Now, if and, and I'll throw another way back to you, Rob. Did Mikel Arteta think that, you know what, we're a different system. We play different ways. Let's go for it. Let's go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. If we get our football going, they'll have a problem. And yet, this is kind of a good Chelsea team to well, have that philosophy, Rob. Or did the yeah, fans, but... did he get sucked into, like, we've got to attack where Arsenal were at home in the first game? It went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the European champions, and it, and it didn't look good for them. Well, well, if he did, he's naive. 
if he didn't, he, his tactical understanding is wrong. When I when I talk about the Martinelli v Lukaku and other areas of the pitch, you're telling me the same with all the other players missing. So why does he think with all yeah. those players missing yeah. he can go to totally, It totally makes totally no totally. sense. What I want to come to another point in that, and, and this is because I don't want Arteta to be blameless because he has a, a bit of these things where we give him that that sort of out because he's young, because he's, he's new, because these other other um, players not available. Graham Potter coaches a Brighton team that has less talent than Arsenal. Graham Potter's team react to things in the game. Graham Potter's team are well set up, know what they're doing with the ball as well as without the ball. Now, that's a coach influencing a group of players who are not as talented as the Arsenal team that played today without Lacazette, without Aubameyang. So I'm not giving him the out that, oh, it's just those big players aren't there and that didn't happen because coaches can affect players. Thomas Tuchel's took the same similar group of players that Frank Lampard had, minus one or two additions that have come in the window and made them different players because they've been coached. Mikel Arteta has to get back to being a coach. We hear all good things about Pep. We hear good things behind the scenes. That today didn't look like a coach his team are coached to know when things were going wrong, what do we need to do? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally agree. And I think that was the takeaway from me and from you and from everybody. I, I, Graham and Lee Dixon in commentary, mm. you're like, wow, like this is going to continue to happen where Reese James is like that. Oh, yeah, I, I'm kind of open over here all the time. Mm. So that that was a shocking part of it today. Um, just before we move on to Chelsea, Rob, and, and yeah. I'll say what I think on it. I hope there isn't extreme pressure on the manager right now, Rob. And we know they've got Man City next, but I hope yeah. it's not like game to game. Oh, he's going to, if he loses that, which is likely. Well, I hope social, me pressure social, media, on social media is going to gonna, uh, at least drive that because if it isn't Arsenal fans, it's other fans who are not Arsenal, you know, putting it out there. So that's kind of part of what he's going to have to live when he has to get a thick skin to get through that. I'm with you. I want to see him end the season, at least yeah. go through a season. I want to see Thomas Party and the team fit and yeah. play. Uh, whether the Conga next, next to him can be a, a good part. I thought the Conga looked really good, mate. Yeah, he nice showed spot. moments, didn't he? Showed a few moments. Get, he gets you know, on the ball. He's brave. He wants it. He's good in possession. I like him. I like him. Is, is there an option to put Tierney as a third centre back and Tavares as it would come on as a, yeah, as a wing back that gives yeah, him another option? You know, let's see, you know, let's get yeah. Lacazette Aubameyang in the team. Yeah. Let's see. I want to see, because I want to know, is Arteta a right. good coach or not? With you. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, and this time at the end of the season, let's have a review where they are, what they've done, yeah. what they developed, are they stepping forward? If they finish eighth, Rob, again, but we see the steps forward and the players yeah. are building down, then, you know what, that, then we'll, we'll look at progression and what's the next mm. thing. But mm. um, I'm with you. Uh, I want to see it through. I think what, what we do know is, the other team in blue got a proper coach, Rob. I heard him again after yeah. the game. I thought he was outstanding. He said, it was an interesting thing that he said, and I think maybe many Chelsea fans would have got, he said, first off, we didn't control it quite as we like, as I would like, and we got the ball in that. You know, when all Chelsea fans would think, first off, we were we scored the goals, but he was still critical of the first off, and then to second off, we got a little bit more control. We were a little bit leggy because we'd done a lot of work, but we're getting ourselves in shape, and... You know, he said he didn't want to overload Lukaku with too much information this week. He wanted him to play a little bit more natural. We'll get used to him. He'll get used to us. But good times. You just get the sense that this guy's right on the button. It's funny, Rob, because I did the lineup for Chelsea today. And, of course, we get the, 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 the list of players. Mm. And then it's up for us to kind of figure out how they're going to play. And, of course, when you see uh, Reese James in the side and Espelicueta, it's like, oh, who's going to play right side centre-back yeah, and who's going to yeah. play wing-back? For, for mm. the most part, I would say... It's actually been Aspilicueta that played wing back, but of course, so I put Aspilicueta as a wing back, and Reese James is the mm -hmm. right side centre back. Right side and game, game kicks off. Of course, it's the other way around. Yeah. And what happens? Reese James has a blinder. He creates mm -hmm. and scores a goal. Is it like? It can't be luck, mate. Everything, every decision he's making, and, and mm -hmm. these key little factors. Champions League. It was like, well, why is he playing Reese James as centre back? And everything he's kind of 
I guess he th maybe he thought he, he he saw this coming and that Reese James yeah. there will be a lot of space over there because the team aren't particularly compact. And we'll have Reese there because he's really good mm -hmm. going forward, better than Espeli I mean, everything well, that, works out for this guy. It, it, it links things into, doesn't it? So you know, what's the pace on the wide areas? It, does he have to go pace yeah. like for like? You know, Espeli is clever. You know, Espeli is brilliant at knowing those distances. What you're talking about when yeah. you're getting dragged in, where to be in in, in tight with your three centre backs when you can go out. But today, today, where I think he thinks we're dominating, we're going to dominate the ball. Yep. We can get uh, Rich James higher up the pitch. He's, he's delivering to the boxes better. Um, yep. it, it, you, you just get the sense things are thought through, Rob. And his in-game tactical switches and his understanding and how he's playing people and giving a minute. Yeah, that's where Mikel Arteta needs to get to. That's where Frank Lampard needs to get to because this guy's come in and shown that's what the progressive young current coach is doing. Um, in Luke we got to get to Rob as well. Yeah, we got to get. In, in, we got to get, big, we got to get to him. In big Rom, he's just given him an absolutely another dimension. <laughs> I mean, holds the back, full back, can have it in the feet. He's joining play is much better than it was before. His ability to drift, he loves drifting down that right hand side where if he gets the ball, he can come in on his left foot. Creates good lane for those two number tens to break through the middle. He loves the fight. You want to get tight to him, he'll fight. Mm. He's now clever where he comes off now and then into the space. Just absolutely top, top, plug in and play, ready to go. Yeah, couldn't have asked for any more, really. I think, of course, that's, that everything was true there and he, and he dominated the game. Mm. And I think he said in his interview, like, to assess his own performance. And he mm. said, yeah, dominant, like, yeah, it, it was. You tell mm. the truth, mate. I think the thing that, you know, we can't spend all, all podcasts on this game, no. Rob. I just, the only thing I want to put over right now, McClark, and we'll talk about him. And I think it's obvious he's going to score a lot of goals. Mm. It's obviously he attacks the ball. It's obvious a lot of these things. I was surprised how Chelsea's attacking game was so different. Yeah. It was so yeah. different. Yeah. It's it direct. Option. It's a different well, it's option. It's an early now. option. Rolling yeah. to his feet, always on, always kind of like shielding the play. He runs in the channels. There's less of the tippy, tippy, tappy, tippy stuff that we saw from Chelsea yeah. with the, all yeah. the little midfield players. And that will come in but, at some point. But the but fact they can is do so that. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Absolutely. and how much, it, it, Havertz and, and Werner and Pulisic and everybody and Ziyech, how much fun is it going to be, Rob? They're going to enjoy him, aren't they? I mean, yeah. it's like going into him. big Rob. Oh, I'll, take, gonna... I'll, I'll run off of him and... Get... He changed every, he's changed everything. I, I guarantee you this is iced coffee, nothing stronger. I guarantee you, before I say, shades of Didier Drogba. Shades yeah. of the great no. man up there for no, him. Absolutely. What Drogba gave him. You know, absolutely. they were a football team, but every now and then with Mourinho's team, with Drogba, they could go yeah. and bully you, and he could go yeah. and ramsack you. It looks to me like Lukaku's just giving them that, that, that same option. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be exciting to watch, and um, yeah. I know we, we, we'll preview it coming up, I think, in our midweek poly. But uh, yeah. Liverpool v Chelsea ne next week, my friend, oh, when we'll come brilliant. up against Virgil van Dijk, and we'll see how that all plays out. Yeah, uh, yeah. then, yeah. then we'll, we'll get a real test. But yeah, Chelsea yeah. fans must be delighted with what they've seen, the way that the team has started, and you yeah. know, they've got a serious, a serious dude, I think we, we'd say, in charge. Yeah, no, they are, and, and that signing, as everybody I think predicted, Rob. I know, I know you stuck with City mm. for this, and, and I'm yeah. not asking you to, to change your mind or whatever, but mm. you can see why a lot of people think that, you know, mm. and I know it's a big jump from fourth to first, but like if they get it going and, and Lukaku plays the majority of the matches, they're going to score a ton more goals, and they've always mm. been good defensively. Anyway, mate, let's let's move on. That was a great chat, and it's a yeah. fascinating game. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, next game we want to touch on, Rob, is Wolves. Wolves nil, yeah. Spurs nil. Um, Nuno going back to Molly. Spurs won, yeah. Spurs won, yeah. Spurs won. Sorry, what did I say? Yeah, it's nil, yeah. Yes. Wolves nil, yeah. Spurs won, yeah. Yeah, Spurs won, yeah. Um, yeah, Harry Kane, like, mm. wow, was there, was on the bench, came on the field of play. Mm. Yeah. Um, two wins out of two for, for Nuno, Espirito Santo, mm -hmm. and Tottenham, Rob. Um, same team, wasn't it, that started? Yeah. Is he going to get something going here, or is this just honeymoon period for a new manager? Um, Kane, the Kane position will influence my, the, the answer to that question, Rob. With him and without him, make makes Spurs different. But I think, I think I'm going off. We're going off two games, so it's very yeah. Early. You've got, got, got I, a bit of gut but, feeling in yeah, there. Yeah, but I, I think I, I like the connection that I, I seem to feel. I like the look. I like the... So, 
return for to, to Molyneux for, for Nuno, who I don't think it was on the greatest terms at the two party. He goes back, he keeps another clean sheet, he gets a win, he gets Harry on the pitch, he gets Deli Ali scoring a goal, running from deep. He's got a back four that a, a, a younger, uh, we've seen him make mistakes, but uh, will grow together. I think he, he's great at, bring, at, at pulling a group and a squad and a, and a togetherness and a feel. He, he's finished, you know, seventh twice with with, with uh, his Wolves team. I just, I like, I like the, the the mix and I like that maybe him not being that big time coach who comes in, who's maybe a little aloof, who's won this and won this and whatever. Maybe mm. he, he comes with a different a different tact, a bit of an arm round, a bit of a mm. listen. It's a great yeah. opportunity for me. It's a great opportunity for you players. Together, we can we can do something. I just kind of like the, the the feel and the look of it at the moment, Rob. And Deli Ali could be the bonus player that we've been waiting to see. We haven't seen this since early Poch days when Poch had this raw young talent that we all went, wow. But Sir Alex Ferguson went and said at one point, Go, Manchester United need, need to go and get yeah. this kid. He, yeah. could, he could come back to that. A happy Deli Ali. Still with his age, could be an absolutely yeah. diamond for, for, for Spurs. Totally agree. Totally agree. Great run. Oh, Delhi of old, run into the mm. box, but gets fouled by the goalkeeper, steps up and takes it, playing in a little bit of a different role, left side of midfield. Mm. I just hope he continues to work hard, Rob, because whether he knows it or not, the talent we know he's got, it, it's just having the motivation and the desire. Mm. To, to, to work hard every single game. It's a little bit, again, early on, he's back in the side, a different manager, and the fans at, at uh, Tottenham Stadium were, were buzzing, and he's happy to be back in the side. He's got to be able to do it week in, week out. Concerns is still, for me, Eric Dyer and Davison Sanchez. Yeah, yeah. Whilst the midfield three ahead of those two are mm. nice and compact, as Nuno yeah. talked about afterwards, generally okay. But Dyer did make a big error, and yeah, a he, he went the, through should've, and, yeah, should, should've and should have scored. scored. Which is, is Eric Dyer? We still don't know, do we? Eric Dyer question mark. It's still Eric Dyer question mark, Rob. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't think I don't think he's at a level as a top four centre back. So again, in a in a strong system with a well organised midfield in front, they can they can, they can do yeah. well. Is it? There's going to be it, times. Could he be John Stones? Could he? Could he come back like Stones did? Could I don't he, think could so. Nuno no, concentrate his mind and his focus a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you've got to give him the opportunity. Going back to your yeah. point, Rob, about how it okay. feels, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I tell you what I think, why I think there's a different feeling there is because of expectations. Expectations with probably fourth or fifth manager choice. Harry Kane going out the door. It's going to be a tough season. I just mm. feel that, like nobody's expecting anything of Spurs. Maybe not too much of Nuno Espirito Santo, but mm. that kind of vibe around. And maybe the players are like, you know what? Nobody expects to do anything. This their star player wants away. I just think that might help initially mm. in terms of togetherness, team spirit, like let's go and play because nobody expects much from us. I think that's helping well, them, Rob. I, I agree. Uh, but what I would say is, is, Rob, it's a bit like Spurs. Spurs have every Spurs player ha has two personalities. The Spurs player below level, Spurs player above level. And we've seen Pops take them to the above level where all yeah. intents and purposes, he should have gone one and should have won the title. The year Leicester won it. Nuno, Nuno has the ability to get those players. He could turn Eric Dyer into the, a new John Stones. He could turn Deli Ali into a new the attacking midfield player. We saw he can keep Young Min Son on form, who, who delivers you at a good level. Also, Jaffe Ten Tanganga, who had a tough time against Traore today. In fairness, Traore's mm. pace getting a little bit so more fast. fun than, than <laughs> Green, which is. Ability, yeah. but what yeah. I'm saying is, I think there's an upside with Nuno that could come that collectively you say yeah. maybe with a little less glare yeah. on them and a little less expectation could mm. all of a sudden get them knocking on the, the top four yeah. door. Yeah. Knock on the door, yeah, why not? Yeah, good. You know, we'll know what's yeah. happening with Kane and whether they bring some mm. replacement players in. Um, yeah. Another player, Rob, I'm going to jump on to my underappreciated performer. And it came mm. in this game, and it comes from a player that I'm pretty sure we've not had before, Stephen Bergwijn. Mm. Now, I know he's he, he's maybe flattered to deceive a little bit and maybe not quite the player that Spurs fans yeah. wanted. But yeah. just in this game, there's a few moves and a few... Like, he's almost yeah. like he's been freed. To be fair, he's always played in a role where he's had to get his backside back quite a bit. But mm -hmm. now with the three guys in midfield for Spurs who do most of that, he's allowed to stay narrow and high. 
and and just excel on the counter attack. A couple of moves, a couple of shots he had, some back heels. Um, I just think he's a little bit underappreciated, and it's early, yeah, it's and, good and he hasn't been consistent. But no, based on today hmm. and what he's potentially able to do. You know, I, I thought no, he had no, a, a, a show, strong game. Well, imagine what, what I would say, and, and, and I suppose the, the challenge, and you'll know it, that, that he'll have to get, is in a wide attacking players now in, in modern football, he's going to have to deliver 10 goals in a season, Rob, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a production. And, and, and is, is, he, is he that guy? Can he be that guy? I don't know if, he, if, mm. if we've seen that from him or not, but certainly with him and Lucas and Sonny up front, that's a mobile front forward who can cause yeah. you problems. And, you know, mm. if Kane stays or not, that'll be interesting. A little mm. mention on, on Wolves and, and Bruno Large, who's come in and, uh, you know, tough opponents to start last in Spurs. Not got anything at, um, so far, but we'll be, um, you know, we'll be wanting to impress himself on, on the team. Started with a yeah. high press and want to put Spurs under a little bit of pressure. Raul Jimenez, we, we know the time he's been out, wanted to had a couple of opportunities, didn't quite hit the target. Traore, if he can add some finishing touch to it, can be a difference maker. So, no real worries for Wolves? No, not not at the moment, Rob. Um, we have seen this before with teams where we're like, oh, they, they look great, they're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And then the more you you don't get, then, then yeah, it yeah. comes to a different thing. I'm thinking of Sheffield United. But um, I think the fans have really enjoyed what they've done. Two narrow victories in a games where they missed a loads of chances to win games in Leicester and they had good chances here as well. They gave mm. us some of the yeah, balls, yeah, yeah. I think uh, listening to Bruno Large, I kind of like his his passion for the game and his kind of, he's, he looks like he's fired up and, mm -hmm. and the team is going to be a little bit more attacking than under Nuno Espirito Santo. But yeah, and zero points after two games, but it doesn't look at all as if fans should be worried about looking over their shoulder. They, of course, right now, it's mm. not even point looking at a table really. Yeah. Um, no, I, th I think they're going to be fine. And, and as long as Raul Jimenez stays fit up front, um, Choi always there, Trincao, the new kid that looks pretty good on the other side. Yeah, the side Two yeah. boys in midfield. It's the same shape as what all the players are used to. I think they'll be absolutely fine and the, and the wins won't be far away. Let's move it to a club who got it absolutely fine this weekend. Manchester City got beat last weekend against Spurs, first time out. Got beat in the, in the Community Shield the week before, so doom and gloom mongers were out in force. But... City get back to business. I think it's usual business, isn't it? Against Norwich, yeah. putting five past them. Uh, Jack Grealish getting his goal. Yeah. The most beautiful thing in the world, but an important goal to, to, to kick his team off. And I'm going to throw one right at you here, Robbie Mosley. And he was very close to being my underappreciated Oh, player I think I know league. where you're going. Gabriel Jesus, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Gabriel yeah. Jesus. He is, under, he is underappreciated. No, Underappreciated, not played as a centre forward, and then we were talking about you know Kane coming in. There's no Aguero. Doesn't particularly play in a false nine. Maybe doesn't take as much control and care of the ball as Pep likes in a false nine. But in, in a team where no Sterling, no Mares, Grealish one side, Jesus the other. Gabriel Jesus was the most dangerous dominant player Manchester City had in the attacking third. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Did you hear Pep's interview, Rob? You might have missed it about no, about no. him. He was mm. asked about him after the game because yeah. he created two goals. He was really, really good. Mm. And he, he couldn't have given more of a glowing, passionate kind of few words about Jesus. Yeah. But like, he's a credit to his parents. Wow. You know, we don't always play him. Comes off the mm. bench. He gives us his best 10 minutes, whatever. Plays the left side, plays up front, plays the right side. Never mm. moans. He's improved. Gives us everything. He was very, very complimentary about just That's basically as, yeah. as, a, as a pro, yeah. which is kind of interesting because yeah. yeah, maybe he's not the best number nine in the world, but I, I still think he gets a little short change in terms of minutes, particularly as a nine, you know, mm. and, and I know he can play mm. in different spots. So I thought that was interesting. I want yeah, to go back to Jack Grealish, Rob. Jack Grealish's goal. Mm. Not a thing of beauty, but let me say this, Rob Earl, and we, and we know, well, we know how they play City and how they try and get behind yeah. defenders. Yeah. It happened yeah, yeah. many times again. Is it going to be a case now that the way that Pep gets into Jack Grealish's head is your talent, your ability, you got to score more goals, mate. you got to score more goals. And even though the goal um, mm. this weekend came yeah. off him, he didn't know much about it. Where yeah. is he? He's four yards out from goal. Where well, yeah, well, 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 you've got to be for City. Where Raheem this, this Sterling learned where Raheem always. Sterling learned to be learned to when, score goals. Because he didn't do it at Liverpool. No. Where Jesus used to is where Mares is, and and as you say, I, I've always and I, I said from the start, 
Jack will make City better. City will make Jack better, and, and Jack will, and, and and Pep will demand of him and push him and talk about product. And there'll be times when he goes down the other side, Rob, and he's showing his right onto his left, and he'll cut balls back to whoever's playing right side of yeah. the attack to it's score on, on, on the on the other side. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's important. I think the goal's important. I think wanting to score more goals is important. I think Jack can be just as pleased by a pass and a, and a nutmeg and a dribble. I think he's got to really focus on those, you know, the, the De Bruyne things where it's assists and goals. Like they're the two most important things, creating chances for his teammates. But um, it, it was an important win. It was important to get a few goals, I think, for City just to to um, boost a little bit of confidence in the group. And it's really interesting you, you mentioned the Jesus thing because I didn't hear the interview. But what I have heard and what I've heard from a couple of people in the game of talking back in England, that they, they said they've had conversations with Pep. And whether Pep's looked at players, he's never just talked about their ability on the field. He's talked about what they're like in the dressing room, what they're like if they're sub and they come onto my team. He said he can't have sulkers. He's got to have good people who accept their roles. And it's really interesting that he, he, he's saying with Jesus that Jesus may be, be one of those players. Now, mm. what's really going to be interesting, Rob, is if if Harry Kane comes into the building, I can't see where Jesus fits. And I've got to be honest, if I'm if I'm Daniel Levin, I think I might have said it on a podcast before, I want as much, I want to wring as much money out of Spur, yeah, as uh, maybe. Man City as I can, and then I go and give me Gabriel Jesus. I'll have a centre mm. forward. Because I think in a in a in a slightly different system with a slightly different group of players where he could become the main guy, I think there's 15 or 20 goals in him. But, but, given how, but given how Pep kind of appreciates what Jesus does mm. in an yeah, ideal he'd world, let him go. he'd yeah. love to keep him there. There's another mm. number nine. There's no other nine mm. in the football club where he's, a, of course, a young, uh, to lap the young kid that's coming through, possibly yeah. as a striker. But he, yeah. in an ideal world, mm. um, you know, that, that, that might be what he'd prefer to do. Um, just in terms of quickly on, on Harry Kane, Rob, with the, you know, him playing and City winning 5-0, it doesn't it doesn't influence the clubs in either no. direction of no. what... Losing last week of... and winning five this week. I, if that's going to be done, it's going to be done, Rob. I don't, I don't think these two next two or three results are, are anything. Mm -hmm. I think the longer it goes, the less likely it becomes. I, I, I don't think it's one of them that you can sort out on that last day. Why not? It's got to be... Is it, is, know, it, just, is City going to just come too... with one final big, big to get him? I, I don't think... I, yeah, I think but I just, I just think, I think Daniel Levy more likely. Da Daniel, Daniel Levy's more, well, I want this. Well, no, no, I, I don't think it's one conversation, right? you got your 150. Because I think you, the moment you say that to Daniel Levy, it's gone to 165. Yeah. I, Listen, we'll I see. I, we, we, yeah, we've got we'll what, see. another yeah. week. We've got another week yeah. of, 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 of what comes along and what doesn't. I, I just yeah. think... It, it, the longer it goes, the quieter it goes. I just don't think that Daniel Levy's getting it getting it done in a day. Hmm. All right, mate. We'll continue to talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. So the other team in Manchester, <laughs> I don't know, mate. Every weekend there's always a story and there's a <laughs> there's an overreaction, an underreaction, or whatever. Man United, we talked about like was fan fantastic against Leeds. We did a yeah. breakdown yeah. Of, of Bruno yeah. and Pogba mm -hmm. and, and Greenwood and how great they were. Um, but we've always said. Certainly, I've always thought, can they be consistent? Can the key players be consistent? And it's something they did a lot last year, Rob. Of course, we all know, everybody knows, and yeah. they went behind many, many times, came back and won. Did it the same thing this time. It said, Mary's to go 1 0 behind, mm. but this time with a home crowd to inspire those home players, it's harder. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. harder. Yeah, it's going to be harder. Yeah. 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 And the, the last five or 10 minutes of the game, Rob, I'm looking, looking at Man United and like, they're not really pushing here. It was kind of even. Mm. Is this is this why I and maybe you and others that are still not sure whether yeah. Yeah. that the manager and this group can win a title? We're, we're, we're two we're two games in uh, and they're unbeaten and they played really well and beat Le Leeds team and drew with the Southampton at St Mary's. It will be difficult on days because of the crowd, because of Ralph, because of, of individuals in the team. So in some respect. It's not the worst result in the world. It, it, it's a disappointing draw. But you're right, Rob. It's the expectancy. It's the that Liverpool have won a title and won and have won two games. That mm -hmm. Chelsea won a win titles and, and won two games. That Manchester United have won a great game and then even performance-wise wasn't great today. Didn't <laughs> Manchester United can go from superb to sloppy in five minutes? They can look brilliant, Pogba. 
Bruno, movement, Ra- Greenwood, yeah. beautiful. And then they can go a sloppy, playing out the back, getting caught in possession, not with the right intensity. You look at this Chelsea team and there looks more of a seriousness about the way they go about mm. the business. Mm. They're, they're mm. just as missing for, for Monday night. And that's a bit, Rob, and you mentioned it last week, you know, yeah. and I, we talked about on the podcast, didn't I? That Monday feeling, coming in and winning. You've got to do that 30 times. Well, it's now down to, you know, 36 opportunities to do it. That's another one gone. Mm. And a point, mm. yeah, you'll take a point and you'll take the Pogba assist and you'll take the Greenwood goal, that are good things, that in some mm. areas of the pitch, things that things are happening. But there's still that sloppiness. There's still that. Manchester United, for me, Rob, have got to build back that invincibility where there's a, there's a, oh, it's United today. Where's it come from? Yeah. I'm going, I'm going to go from? somewhere. Where I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to try and lead you to it. To the manager yeah. or to the players? Yeah, the manager. Mm. Now, I'll say this. I said to Tim Howard in the studio, I don't think I said it on air, actually. Um, there was sloppiness in the first half, defensively, yeah. right? Yeah. A few moments of defenders mm. giving the ball away yeah. a bit, you know. I, th- yeah. I thought even Bruno was a little. Yeah. I mean, some people say it was a foul. I don't think so. I think he was a little mm. bit too casual on the ball. At half time, a Man United of old, where Sir Alex Ferguson in charge, he hammers the team. He fixes that sloppiness at half time, Rob. And I think that's what I'm talking about. Where I'm, I, I'm wanting a manager to demand focus through being a scary, a scary guy. Somebody don't want to upset. Having the passion, yeah, but, but having it, that drive. I hear you. Okay, go on, finish. It on, could have been nipped finish. in the bud. It could have no, been nipped in the bud yeah. at half time, and it was con- they continued to be sloppy in the second half and could have lost the game. Okay, it could have hear, manager done more about it. I hear your point. Um, where I would disagree is that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer isn't that Sir Alex Ferguson. He's so got he to be. can't be. No, 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 be. he hasn't. Tougher. No, he's, he's got to be he's, tougher. There's got to be a fear got, factor about it. He's him. got to be tougher and he's got to have a fear factor. But he ain't, he ain't Sir Alex Ferguson. He's got to do it all his way. And let's not forget... Two, two, three, yeah, well, they were 2-0 down last year at Southampton and come back to win 3-2. So we, you, you can argue he did it last year. So it's in him. And, and, I, and I get that you've got to do it in a different way. But Pochettino is, it isn't Sir Alex Ferguson, but could drive people in a certain way. Klopp isn't, isn't Sir Alex Ferguson. But drives. Pep does it in a different way. Ollie's got to find his way. Well, what's, his right. way then? what's his way well, going to be then? Well, well, in the dressing room, I don't know. I don't know what dressing room guy he is. But sometimes you've got to drag somebody off. Drag yeah. somebody off at half time yeah. and go. Yeah, we're doing okay, but Bruno today's not your yeah. day. Well, that's and not acceptable. Goes, off you come. And everybody goes, wow. Or you, you do it with the system, or you do it with the way you think, or you say to them after the game, that one good enough. No days off this week or whatever. I don't know. The, the, the game's different than what we say. But what I'm saying is not everybody... So Alex Ferguson was built into what he this great manager because of who he is and he, he lived to his personality. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got to find his personality with that group. And you're right. What is the thing that, that triggers a change at half time? You said, Rob, about three minutes ago, Thomas Tuchel, how he demands things. And Correct. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he go. He, you'd see him on the side getting. We've seen him getting fired up and angry and screaming at his teammates to to tune in to focus. And I well, he, and, he took off. Like, was it Hudson and Doy? Was it Hudson and Doy? Put him on. Right. Took him off. Right. That, not, that kind not, of thing. Not, that, that's that's exactly. That gets you attention. But that's what exactly we're talking about. So I'm agreeing that Ollie can do that. But we've we've got to stop thinking that Ollie's Sir Alex. He isn't. Ollie's got to be Ollie. Ollie's got to take this group and drive them in the way that he can. And I don't know what that way is. Like, we, we don't know the players. What are their buttons? But you say, but we know the things as professionals. We know what happens in the dressing room. He's got to start to know what buttons to push to get the kind of reaction. Consistency, Rob. And, and, and the same thing happened again. You said it. They weren't behind a lot last year. Like, mm. well, let's stop doing that. That's not kind of good. That's not a good habit to get into. And it happened again. And listen, it, it, it's like, it's a good squad of players. And the manager deserves credit for bringing in some really talented players, for persuading big time players to come as well. It looks good. It's just, and they're under, they matched an unbeaten record of Arsenal, which is mm. which is well yeah, done. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 27, 27 away games. games. Yeah, it's brilliant. Not, brilliant. not losing. I think the players, Rob, and, and I made this point to you, I think, last week, and I heard again um, some people. That group of players have got to start a move. I know the manager drives it, and I know he's in charge, and ultimately it will be Ollie who wins a title or Ollie doesn't. But sometimes out there, Rob, 
when you're in that group, when when you played yeah. good teams, they they don't half not themselves. They get onto that center half who's been sloppy and yeah. hammering and hammering till he he dare make another mistake. Right. I've yeah. seen Roy Keane shouting at players when we play Man United. Man United players have looked like they've had tears in their eyes. And I won't name them for the one of, of having to embarrass them. I've seen mm. big time players because Roy Keane's jumped down the throat yeah. and gone, like, we can yeah. lose a game. Man United have got to get that as a group as well, Rob. I totally agree the manager's got to do more, but that group of players have got to want it as well. They, that group of players have got to rip each other's throat out if they need to to go and win a title. Great result for Southampton Football Club, by the way, Robbie Earl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a different look side at the moment. There's experienced players that are not in the team at the moment for some of the younger guys that they've got. Mm. You know, I, I fear for Southampton a little bit this season, but I tell yeah. you, that's St Mary's. Ralphie, you know, mate. there's a good atmosphere there. And they, Ralphie's and they, got they, his waistcoat on. Ralphie's got looked, his waistcoat on. He looked, a bit, on. He looked a bit funny in his, in his attire but with his white shoes on. Quite, his... Don't you not, Ralphie. And I tell you what, I'm going to go for my underappreciated player of the week, Mr Muster. Hmm. Tino Livramento. Oh, Young a, new, a, new, a newbie. Yeah, new a newbie. Newbie from Chelsea. Signed on loan from Chelsea, I think five million quid, so somewhere around seven, eight million dollars. Uh, has been looked a little look up, been to all the youth England youth ranks. Chelsea kids came into club at, at nine years of age, kind of came from there, not far from where I used to live back in, in, in England. Has been there all his life. Typical bit of Chelsea business, developed him to a level, Rob. Hmm. Probably not quite going to be ready for their first team. Sold him to, to Southampton, but a buyback clause in there. So somewhere around 35 million to 40 buyback clause. So it's almost like, go and give us a bit of money, go and have him, give him Premier League football, let him see if he proves himself. If he becomes a top, top class, yeah. we get him back. Or even if he becomes less than top class, we get him back, we sell him, we make some money. I mean, so bring, when we talk about business and sometimes what yeah, Arsenal yeah. do and what yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea do, Chelsea, 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 right. Chelsea yeah. have got it absolutely nailed down. But I just thought his performance, Rob, his maturity, he's very... What I think is a Ralph type of player when we've seen um, Walker Peters come in and do a similar job. Tariq Lamptey is another Chelsea kid who went to Brighton and, and done, done a similar thing. I, th I enjoy to see these young players who move from big clubs, get a chance to play in the first team and develop their career over the next three or four years and see where they can get to. So I just thought it was yeah. it was a nice one to give him a mention. Yeah, uh, you sure. know, Let's look how he, his season goes at, yeah. with Southampton. Liverpool 2 Burnley hmm. nil. Yes. Uh, Diogo Jota again. Next game scores a goal. Another header. Uh, kind of, kind of, quite shocking how many headers he scores for for not a big tall guy yeah, at all. Yeah. Sadio Mane got close, 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 and finally got his goal in the second half with a clever little assisting ball from Trent Alexander Arnold. Hmm. Um, a couple of things that I want to mention, Rob. But you go first yeah. on, on what you what you thought about Liverpool. Um. I think Liverpool with a full house at Anfield makes a difference, Rob. Yeah. I think yeah. Burnley have beat them twice, haven't they? I think in lockdown, nobody in Anfield and, and, and just creates a different mood. It feels like there's a bit of a buzz back to Liverpool Football Club. Bobby Elliott getting his he, he, Premier Six start. Virgil van Dijk and Matty make them diff, make them look better. Good. Look Can good. condense the play, look good, look fit, look short. Van Dijk plays the pass, Rob. I think there's something that's underappreciated. Van Dijk's ability to start play off with the pass mm. out to Elliot as they gets the second goal, I think it's important. Mm. Jordan Henderson back in the team, Rob, was excellent in a 4-4-2 where they were quite rigid. Burnley found nice spots where I thought he dictated the play, nice responsibility. He's the guy that I'm talking about what I want Man United to have. Somebody just miscontrols or gets a bit sloppy. Jordan yeah. Anderson gets into the yeah, face and absolutely. gets yeah. gets them back up again. Um, yeah. and, and and a point that, that wasn't lost on me. Uh, I think when you've got the likes of Van Dyke and, and Matip and, and even Gomez, when those fullbacks go forward, now Trent goes and helps for the Mane goal and Simicas for the second goal mm. because you've got centre backs Rob who will go one on one. Who can handle what's going to come out if it mm. if it if it's emergency situation? And I think mm. those four backs can go, and it'll be Robbo probably once he's fit. And I think we'll see more of the old Liverpool than last season with those centre backs gone and full backs kind of not knowing when to go and being a little mm. bit nervous. I think we saw a, a different attack, and as we know, Liverpool's full backs create as much as their midfield mm. players. Yeah, I think when you think of Norwich as their first game, Rob and Burnley as their second game, it's a nice gentle start. It's a mm. nice gentle start for. For Virgil van Dijk, who I thought looked 
comfortable, mm. classy. You know, and, and Joel Matip, by the way, has started the season really yeah, well as well. Wow. So, of course, like we knew they were going to make a big difference. And I thought they were excellent. Harvey Elliott, Robbie Earl, mm -hmm. mm. in terms of Liverpool's kind of critics, maybe the, uh, the squad's not that deep. And if they get a few injuries, it's not as good as others. I mean, he obviously went out on loan last season, did a really good job. Yeah. He's back into the team. And I wasn't sure whether he's going to play wide or whether he's going to play in the one of the little number eights in the three. Yeah. And he did that. He played the right side of Jordan Henderson. I mean, I know Oxford Chamberlain played there last time, Rob, but Harvey yeah. Elliott mm. looks like a player. I mean, he's always looked like a player. Yeah. There's yeah. a bit of maturity now. I think he signed when he was so young at the football club, but always the right move to send him on low. But I just thought he was neat, yeah. neat and tidy, reliable on the ball, good energy, gets around the pitch pretty well. That's got to be encouraging when you've got you know, we always have Curtis Jones to come back into the team as well. Yeah, you've got um, Kater, Curtis Jones, we've got Thiago, we've got Fabinho. Yeah, Fabinho's will come back in. Yeah, yeah it, it is a, it's a little good. bit more depth, as you say, yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it just felt a little bit like, and I said one of the things broken with the injuries and all that happened last year, the lockdown and Klopp losing, he's, he's one of them. There, there was... Feels like a little bit of mojo back, and I think you know we'll, we'll know more after next weekend. Listen, they've got a proper test against against yeah. a, a Chelsea team that, that are flying at the moment, and it's very early days. But those games, as we said, could become really important in in, in yeah. the rundown. So we get a chance to to see where both are in in, in their standings. But um, mm. impressive, good good day for for Liverpool. I thought Burnley were yeah. were you know four four two aggressive. Just wonder, Rob, how, how and it, it's it's it's. Kind of leaked out in a, in a couple of managers' press conferences. I just want to get your thought on this. Like, have we gone a bit the other way with the challenges and the physicality? Mm. And one or two, mm. you know, Klopp's had words to say. I think um, Oli had a few words to say because of the Bruno losing the ball. And one mm. or two just sort of saying about mm. protecting players and we're going too far. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Are managers trying to have it a little bit their own way and, you know, want everything in the nice football and stopping people closing down and putting a foot in? I think it's interesting, mate, and, I, and mm -hmm. we have seen it. And I think there is a, there is a risk that it turns that way because the English mm -hmm. referees are a bit literal. You yeah. know, they'll, they'll go from one, or the other. one <laughs> thing to another thing pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and yeah. I think it's a good point. English fans as we know, love that side of the game. Yeah, love the so tackle, you can get a little bit sucked into as a referee. Ah, nothing wrong with that. And that's good. And the fans mm. cheer and the play continues. They have got to be a little bit careful of that. I mean, I think, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it, I, I like the adjustment into this season because I think particularly those soft penalties were so annoying mm. when we're breaking down stuff in the studio and we're saying like, well, for me, it's not a penalty, but now yeah. it is. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's obviously gone now for the time being. But I think it's a good point, mate. And I, and I said that, that Klopp was moaning about it and said we could set mm. the game back 10 years, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so watch this space. It's a good point. Mm. We don't want flying tackles flying no. in and people getting hurt. So, of course, like, there's a balance between it. But it's a it's a point well made and it's something that we should all mm. watch for and see how that, that uh, kind of goes. I think not least, you know, the Van Dyke challenge with Pickford last season, cool. that, you know what I mean? Change, change the course yeah. of Liverpool season and everything else. And, and you're yeah. right. I think there's, there's an adjustment to come, Rob. I think we've gone from last season, any kind of contact to, to almost now, like anything goes. And let's just find mm. some middle ground where yeah. you can make some contact. There can be some physicality and, and that's OK. Because I, I think we've almost got to the stage where, where like Bruno today, I think it was almost like... Anytime you get you get a contact, you go down. It's like that's a free kick. And yeah, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get yeah. that. Yeah, and I think because the referees are saying no now, people are a bit going in arms. But I think there's something between. Listen, you can have a little bit of physicality, but but let's not foul. Let's not go over the top. Let's not start injuring people because that hurts not only the team but it hurts the game. It hurts us all. Yeah, it's everybody. Is, yeah. is, 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 is what we're viewing. So, but a uh, mm. good win for Liverpool. Uh, two and two for them. Good start of the season. Jurgen Klopp, no doubt, will be happy with that. We just have a, a quick uh, over a couple yeah, of other games. Yeah, the games this weekend. I'll start with Palace Brentford because that one always interests me. Patrick's going to be my my sort of go to um, look this season at where they are. Apparently, he was a bit happier. Uh, said there was things to work on with a nil nil at Brentford. I mean, it's a Brentford team that we know are flying. They've got a bit of spirit. Have come up, new league, good players as well as good manager. Um, Palace sort of. Got a little bit better into the second half and maybe had one or two chances. Benteke with a header particularly, I thought, should have done better. But um, I still think there's more to come 
from uh, from Patrick's team. Conor Gallagher, I think, in midfield, Rob, particularly, I know from Trust, was yeah. excellent for Crystal Palace. Yeah. Really yeah. gave him a spark and a bit of life. At least they, they tell me he's a good player. And, and when SA gets back as well, you know, get Will firing. I think that, you know, hopefully good times ahead yeah. for Palace. Yeah, a game I enjoyed, Rob. And of course, we always enjoy him as Leeds 2, Everton yeah. 2. Mm. Um, back and forth, you know, they go up, they equalise. Really good game of football. I loved it. And a player that very nearly got my underappreciated Robs on 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 Everton, and a sneaky good signing in Damari Gray. Mm. Now whether he feels like this is another opportunity at the big time, he's been kind of yeah. tossed around a little bit and not really loved at any particular club. He has started the season really really well. Whether it's centrally, whether it's wide, quick, scores mm. a lovely goal by the way. Out of nothing with his left foot read. Did tell him though, any Rob? You yeah, know when he's he looks at him, so he's a talent. It's almost like, why is he? Why is he not done better? I don't know. I don't know. It feels like this must be something, mustn't it? it yeah, that we don't know like, about. Yeah, yeah. Because he looks he's not a good trainer, and, and or he's not this, or yeah. he doesn't focus, or he messes about with set pieces. You know the ones. He's always somebody who, like you know, is, is a bit of a clown. I don't know. He's just with yeah. all that ability. For some reason, it, it's not really clicked. Yeah, and you're right. And and now maybe under a manager that I'm sure is going to take to him straight away, given how he started, and he's mm. one of his signings in Rafa Benitez, it's just good. You, you yeah. Of course, you add in uh, coming up, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison, um, you know, and the holding players they've got, they're fairly reliable. Defensively, again, Michael Keane, Rob, made a was a, yeah. a little short on, on one of the goals mm. that they conceded. Yeah, about worry about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just think Damari Gray with that Everton team is somebody that we don't really talk about too mm. much. But no. he started the season really well. It was a cracking game of football. And Everton, you know, doing okay under Rafa. You know, we, we know that there's not yeah. much wiggle room for him. In Rafa, we trust. Yeah, I think he, did, I think he might do okay. I think he might do In okay. Graham Potter, we trust as well, my friend. Brighton yeah. 2, Watford nil. And mm. listen, he can even cut the beard and make it look pretty cool, Graham Potter. <laughs> he, he, he's got great tactics on his chin as well as on his pitch. I mean, Somebody said he looks a little bit like Chuck, Chuck Norris. I, I, I thought it was quite a good shout. There's a little bit of Chuck mm, Norris in him now with the beard. Like Chuck tactics, because he, he knows what he's doing. I, yeah. I like, like himself. Really interested in the way he plays, keeps possessing the ball. His team are, are well width, drilled. They width, know what they're so doing. much width in their play. With the players. Sean, Sean Duffy, by the way. Um, mm, yeah. You know, out the team, was player of the year 2019, then gets disregarded, goes to Celtic, has a bad time in lockdown, doesn't shut the door on him, Robbie Musto, doesn't do what no. we've seen Arteta do once or twice, close the door like you're done, leaves it open, has a good pre-season, comes in, scores a goal, now back on, on time, and could be an important part of, of what Brighton do, especially when you've just sold uh, Ben White for 50 million and you've got a hole in, in the back line. Yeah. The other one that's not sneaky, the other one that, that blares quality, Eve Basuma, my friend, he's, oh. got 18 months, he's got 18 months on his contract. I yeah. mean, he was all that, he, he was all action. Yeah, he, he, was, he looks he, like he a million was, dollars. He, he, was Pierre, he was Patrick Vieira like in midfield, yeah. mate. Winning yeah. things, closing down for the goal, lovely passing, can see a ball, can be a clever little ball with, with a no eyes, no, no look pass. I mean, he's yeah. got 18 months on his contract. Looks to be yeah. enjoying his football. Looks to be enjoying working with Potter. But I'm telling you, destined yeah. for big things. Could play anywhere. Could, could play anywhere. Yeah. Could play in any team. Yeah. And I mean any team in the Premier League. I think he's mm. that good. We, we we knew that from last season. He started tremendously well. Um, yeah, very, very good. And just a quick quick line on him as well, just tactically. Last week yeah. I watched the game. Pascal Gross is playing left back in a back four. This game, Pascal Gross is playing right wing right back in a three-man defense. When you talk yeah. about a coach that's kind of got mm. got a couple of systems now grooved, yeah, um, nailed down. It's impressive. It's impressive. Mm. You know, of course, the goals and 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 creating yeah. chances off the back of the domination possession is what they struggle with a little bit. But you know, yeah. so far, really interesting so point you really make, Rob. And I just just want to make the point because we'll, we'll just then quickly talk about Danny Ings. But he said something. He was asked after about John Duffy, and he said, you know, I'm really pleased for him. He's come in, he scored, and whatever. And he said. We've, you know, he's time away and whatever. He said, my group's moved on, but he's come in and accepted. And he said, one of the things I've learned is to give him more clarity of what his role was. So it's almost like he was saying, maybe I, I didn't explain what I wanted yeah. him to do before. I can do better. Yeah. And he was sort of saying about himself, 
I've learned to get the best out of him. I need to give him clarity. And I thought that was really mm. quite an important thing for, for a coach and a manager to say, who obviously mm. enjoys working and developing players. Mm. Talk about players and talking about goals. Talk about goals, Rob. And we saw a mm. cracker. We saw a cracker from sure. a player that looks sure. like potentially one of the signings of the season, if he continues. Mm. Of course, Danny Ings were talking about Aston Villa with a wonderful overhead kick. Yeah. We sadly have to worry about his fitness over the course mm. of the season. But apparently he's been away in the summer, Rob, in a, um, I think, Portugal or a Spanish Super training training. camp. Yeah, yeah. Getting really, really, and he looks in great nick. Mm. He scores a wonderful goal today. Uh, sorry, in the game against Newcastle United. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little great surprise. Business. That, I mean, great yeah, business, isn't it? Some great else business. Gar guarantee, yeah. guarantees yeah. your goals. And I think, I think it's, it feels like a nice kind of move. Ambitious club, good manager. We'll play football. We'll, 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 we'll play different systems. We'll get him in. Yeah. I think he'll enjoy being at the football club. He, he could be a hero. You know what I mean? He can go there. He's not going to get drowned out if he goes to some of the bigger clubs. Great club. It's not. a great club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 odd thousand if they get it going there. So, yeah, great win. Mm. That's uh, talking about strikers, my friend. We went to. Uh, Coinspec Sportsbook, our, our partners, and, and wanted just to get a sense of how they see uh, the race of the Golden Boot this, this time around. And probably no surprise after today's performance. Uh, top of the charts is Romelu Lukaku at plus 270. He's followed by Mo Salah, who's always in and around it, at plus 450. Harry Kane, plus 500. Now, obviously, that might depend where and who he's playing for. Bruno Fernandes is plus 800. Diogo Jotis, plus 1,600. And then we go out to the plus 2,000s of Jamie Vordy, Calvert-Lewin, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Danny Ings, Young Min's son. Ryan Sterling's at plus 2,500 with the likes of Mane, Mason Greenwood, Gabriel Jesus, Patrick Bamford, Edison Cavani. And then we go out to the, the plus 4,000s of Timo Werner, Ivan Tony, Callum Wilson, and Pierre Emmick Obamiang. Obamiang mm. was up there. I mean, he, not too long ago, he, he, he was joint winner of the Golden Boot, but obviously yeah. out at plus 4,000, maybe not going to get enough games in for Arsenal. But uh, mm. any thoughts on Lukaku at plus 270? Is he your favourite? Is Kane good value at plus 500, even though <coughs> he hasn't started yet? Well, I think if you if you think that Kane's going to move to Manchester City, mm. that's really that's that's pretty yeah. good. Plus 500, yeah. of course, we don't know yet. And those odds will change given where he is mm. uh, in September. Um, is it an outside bet, Rob? And I, and I know that we've you love an outside bet, my friend, don't you? A little well, outside, little an each way bet, if if he can even do an each okay. way bet. But a little outside yeah. bet at plus two thousand eight hundred would be Mason yeah, Greenwood, because there's a there's an amount of upside. So two and two, two and two. Yeah, is he going to get enough games? Two. Is he going to play? Is well, he going to play? He blimey should play. He should play, Rob. And he, well, might Cavani come in? I mean, that's the problem, though. We might get. 12 goals in 20 starts, yeah. but, you know, somebody else has 38 games. I guarantee that he would have done a better job than Anthony Martial as a centre-forward <laughs> in today's game. He, you know, Martial didn't affect the game. I think we looked at the stats yeah. at half-time. He had 10 touches, the fewest of any player out there. So, listen, he's plus 2,800. It's, it's an yeah. up, but I, I just think we he's 19, you know, and, and he looks like a different kind of, looks more mature this season. And we'll be a little outside bet. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Look, look, uh, okay, I was just looking down the list and I thought, Little sneaky outsider for you, Bobby Musto. Yeah, who have you got? Jogo Jota. Yeah, yeah. Plus sixteen hundred. Sneaky. sneaky plays more games than we all think. Can score from the right. Can score from the left. Can score from central. Can score from yeah. deep. Yeah, he might, he, he might just awesome play a lot of football this year. You know, he yeah. might be the one who plays in the rest money in the mess for me. You know, just thinking plus sixteen hundred. Jogo Jota. Might just be good, but if you look at his, his goal ratio of game, goals per game, he, he's, he's in pretty good form. And yeah. Marcus Rashford it, it would, would probably be in there, but obviously he's got shoulder injury. Don't know if he's going to get enough games in. Would, 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 he's, not, he's, he's not scoring. He's not scoring. He's not going to be Golden Boot ever. No, he's never going to win a Golden. <laughs> what Boot. in a thirty-eight game season? You're saying never. he cannot be Golden no. Boot? No, he's not a scorer. Wash your mouth out, my friend. He's got he's, 20, he's, got, he's got one of those seasons in him. I'm telling you. <laughs> When he, when you're united to, to Marcus Rashford, he, 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 mm -hmm. 25 goals and wins a golden move. Listen, mate, we're going to wrap it up here for that's the end of uh, match week two. Uh, although we've got West Ham and Leicester still to play tomorrow, that should be a great game. Uh, Chelsea, Liverpool, Brighton and Spurs hold the top four spots at the moment. All got maximum points at the other end. I know it's just two games to go, have gone, but Norwich, 
Arsenal and Newcastle occupy the bottom three spots. So make sure you look out for our next podcast. That's on Thursday, August the 26th. And it's um, a bit of a special because we hopefully will have had the Champions League draw. So we'll know who the teams will be playing and who will be favourites. We'll maybe go to our friends at Points Bet Sportsbook to see who will be favourites for that. Chelsea, PSG, Manchester City, Liverpool. I mean, mm. there's some big teams in Juventus mm. with or without Ronaldo. So we'll see how that one goes and we'll talk about any transfer targets and if Harry Kane's any closer to leaving or not. And also preview match week three that sees Man City host Arsenal and a big one that you have to see Liverpool versus Chelsea, which is, uh, I think, the Saturday 12.30 on Big NBC. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musto, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe. Stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.